If you need to scrape product information, pricing, and inventory from physical Home Depot stores, I'm going to show you how to do this using SERP API with a few undocumented features their API provides. This will let you enter in any list of UPCs, SKUs, brand names, model numbers, or just search terms and look up the pricing and inventory for any Home Depot store so you can track sales and performance. This here is the unofficial Home Depot API provided by SERP API. I'll put a link in the description. This is a third party not affiliated with myself, nor do I believe they're affiliated with Home Depot. This search endpoint lets you put in any free text search with a few hidden features I'll show you. And you can also provide a store ID, which they say is optional, but really isn't. And there's an easier way to find store ID I'm gonna show you. And the API will return a wealth of information about your search results, including price and inventory for that store, which isn't even documented here on the official website. Check out the link in the description to see my freemium service that will let us access their API and make queries and download results. You just provide your SERP API key, which you can get for free with 100 free searches every month, and we'll query the API on your behalf and parse everything out so you can download these results in CSV formats up to 10 rows a day for free. Here, I just ran a quick demo for the search term scraper. So I can see basic fields like the product ID, a link to the product on Home Depot, model number, brand, as well as ratings, number of favorites, and reviews. Now this price and this pickup.quantity are price and inventory, but I didn't provide a store ID as I mentioned earlier. So it just picks this random store in Maine and the price is gonna be different based on your local store. So if you just need the basic product information like brand and model number, you don't need to worry about the store ID. But if you care about price or inventory, you need to provide a store ID. So SERP API has its own list of store IDs you could use. But I think what's gonna be easier for you is just go to the Home Depot website. I have it linked here. Then go up on the left-hand side and you'll see your local store here. I'm closest to Key West, so it thinks that's my local store. Here the store ID is 6313, so you can look it up pretty instantly. I can see other stores nearby, 6302 is Marathon. Or if you wanna go across the country, you can use a search feature here and look up all other stores. You can type in any city, state, zip code, et cetera, and get those four or three digit store IDs from the search results. So here are a bunch of store IDs I found in Florida. If I want to look up the price and inventory in these stores, I just take note of these four digit numbers. I'm just gonna use Key West because that's where Home Depot thinks I am. I'll leave this at page one, but we can get other pages of results and hit execute. This will now query SERP API and you can see the preview on the right hand side of what it's doing. Now I can confirm this pickup store name says Key West in this quantity six is different from before as well as the price. To verify the price and quantity, I can copy this link and open it up in my browser which has my store set to Key West and verify these numbers match. So that's great if you wanna scrape a bunch of products matching a free text term or a brand or category, but what if you have a specific SKU number or UPC? Like I can see the SKU number here, and let's pretend I didn't have this information and I'd only had the SKU number. Maybe I had a manifest from a truck and I wanna look up the information by the SKU number. So a little secret is you can paste in any UPC or SKU number into this query here to SERP API. And they don't document this, but Home Depot will actually look it up and return that information for that product. And what's really important to note here is that now I get the product ID here, which is actually the Home Depot internet ID so this ID here is internal to Home Depot, but once we get that internet ID from the store SKU, we can use another endpoint to look up details about that product on a recurring basis. So once you have those product IDs or internet IDs, you can use this Home Depot product API from SERP API. It's a subset of their Home Depot API. And this takes in that product ID or internet ID as well as a store ID and returns all those fields, including price and inventory, plus a few extra fields. So here I can get all those thumbnail images and I can get a lot more information as far as the product description and some specifications like here. I can see things about the colors, materials, weight and dimensions. That stuff isn't available on the basic search endpoint. This also gives us back the full product description and it gives us back the UPC and the SKU number in case we need those for other reasons. And of course, if we provide a store ID in conjunction with the product ID or internet ID, we'll also get back the price and inventory for that store. All right, now if you have a list of SKUs or UPCs you got somewhere and you wanna look these up, you can check out this workflow here, SERP API Home Depot Search Pagination. 
So you can use this to enter in a list of UPCs or SKUs for free up to 10 rows a day with our service. And you can enter in multiple store IDs in case you wanna look up the inventories and pricing of these three products at these two stores for a total of six requests. And again, this list can be UPCs or SKUs and you can do up to 10 rows of these per day for free with our service. Check out the link in the description. For this demo, I'm just gonna do one store ID so I don't burn through all my SERP API credits and you'll see it's gonna extract out the products from the results. This workflow is going to run for each search query and store ID provided Provided. It's going to attempt to paginate because oftentimes we want to get the full set of results with this pagination workflow. But in this case, it only gets one result per query. So I have a total of only three rows from all these requests. And here's my output file. I can see the input store ID and the input SKU in case you're doing combinations of different ones to keep track of them. And it looks up the product title as well as the product ID or internet ID on Home Depot if I want to reaccess these in the future, link to Home Depot, and most importantly, the stats like the number of reviews as well as the pricing and inventory for that local store provided. Now, if you wanna keep track of these products and keep running this, you can take note of these product IDs and use a separate workflow here that uses the product ID lookup instead of using the search lookup, which is gonna give you more details back. So now I paste in the list of product IDs, not SKUs, as well as my SERP API key and let the workflow do the lookups, which will do basically the same thing as before, but this will be more reliable since these internet IDs are not gonna be as flaky as those SKUs. And here are my results here. I can see the inputs again, like before, except this time I'm using product ID or internet ID. And I can see extra information that the details lookup provides, like the category, full description. I can also see UPCs and SKUs in case I need that again. And of course, price and inventory for the store ID provided, Key West. So we can keep running this workflow every week or so if we want to keep track of these metrics. And lastly, I want to demo the search workflow again, but using free text and doing pagination. So here I can enter in a list of search terms, or let's say you want to keep track of a particular brand or category of products. You can put in any free text search here that'll find the products on Home Depot. I'm just going to do scraper for now, put in your SERP API key and the store ID you want to track. For this demo, I'm going to limit the pagination to only make four additional requests. So I'm going to make a total of five requests to the SERP API. So here I can set it as four, and this will only make five pagination requests in total for my search. But if you wanna get everything, just leave that alone and leave it as unlimited. Only catch is it will burn through your SERP API credits, so you probably will have to have a paid plan from SERP API to do that. So here I can see the workflow cleared the API for the search term and went through all the pages, and now I can see the results, which is just this huge CSV file. So again, we have the inputs on the left, and we have things like the product title here in column D, Remember, this is just the basic search, so it's not gonna include things like the product description, UPCs, or SKUs. If you wanna get those back, you can feed the product ID column into the product lookup workflow like we did before. But we do get things like the brand, model number, and again, we get the price and inventory at the store ID we provided. So we can at least keep track of how these different brands are selling relative to each other within a free text category we provided. Or if we use search terms for different brands, we can compare them to each other. So I hope you guys found this useful and that I showed you a few of these hidden SERP API features you can use for free from their API. So definitely go check that out if you have a big list of products you need to look up or you wanna keep track of sales and inventory. Let me know in the comments what you're using this data for or if you want me to explain more on this. I know I covered a lot in a short video, so I'd be happy to go more in depth if you let me know in the comments what you guys wanna see. Thanks for watching and check out this next video here on how you can scrape the Home Depot website yourself without an API using only your browser. Like and subscribe for more.